All right, question 30. 3x plus b equals this, 3y plus c equals that. In the equation above, b and c are constants. If b is c minus 1 half, which of the following is true? Okay, so looking for x in terms of y here, because is means equals. So basically we have to get rid of b and c in this system, okay? Um, well, let's see how we could do that. Um, hmm. Well, to get rid of b, I could just plug this in wherever I see it. So I'll do that here. So I get 3x plus c minus 1 half equals 5x minus 7. <clears throat> and I have 3y plus c equals 5y minus 7. Um, so at this point, I will uh, negate this entire bottom equation, negative, negative, and switch that sign. And now I will sort of add the lines, okay? So I get 3x minus 3y um, plus c with a minus c. This will cancel out. And I get minus 1 half equals 5x minus 5y. And negative 7 plus 7 cancels out. Okay, <clears throat> now I just have to rearrange and solve for x. So I could, for example, subtract 3x, and that will give me negative 3y minus 1 half equals 2x minus 5y. Then I can add 5y, and I get uh, 2y minus 1 half equals 2x. And the last step is I just divide by 2 here, here, and here. Since this already has a denominator, I'll just stick it down the bottom. So this cancels out. I get y minus 1 fourth equals x. So x is y minus 1 fourth. That is answer choice A. All right, we're in the grid ends. Tickets for a school talent show cost $2 for students and $3 for adults. <clears throat> If Chris spends at least $11, but no more than $14 on X student tickets and one adult ticket, what is the possible value of X? Okay, so we are buying X student tickets. They each cost $2. So that's 2X is how much he's spending on student tickets. One adult ticket for $3. And he wants to spend at least 11, but no more than 14. So we can solve this system by subtracting 3. And then we could divide by 2. So we get 4 less than x less than uh, 5 and a half. So let's just choose x equals 5. The table above lists the ages of the first 12 United States presidents when they first began their terms of office. According to the table, what was the mean age in years of these presidents at the beginning of their terms? So for this one, we're going to need the calculator. <clears throat> so we could do it longhand, just adding these together and dividing. Or we could use the built-in uh, list function to enter the list and then find the mean. Uh, for simplicity here, I'm just going to add them all up manually. So plus 62, plus 58, plus 58, plus 59, plus 58, plus 62, plus 55, plus 68, plus 51, plus 50, plus 65. Then I'm going to divide by however many presidents there are. This is the first 12 presidents, so we divide by 12. We get 58.58. So that's 58.6, uh, uh, rounding to the nearest tenth. If the expression above is rewritten in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, what is the value of b? Okay. 
So our first step here is to distribute this minus two. So we get minus two x squared plus four x plus two. And to that we have to combine that with minus three x squared plus five x and minus two. So if we combine these, we get minus five x squared plus nine x and these cancel out. So if we wanted the value of b, which is the coefficient of x, right, uh, that answer would be nine. In a circle with center O, central angle AOB has a measure of five pi over four radians. If uh, the area of the sector is formed by central angle AOB, okay, let's call this AOB, uh, is what fraction of the circle? All right, so we have the central angle measuring five pi over four radians. So they gave that to us in radians, which indicates that maybe we should use S equals R theta, right, where theta has to be measured in radians. So this is the arc length formula. Um, well, let's see. Do we know the radius? Uh, I don't think so, right? Um, yeah, all we know is the angle. So what we can do is we can say, all right, five pi over four is our angle. That's out of a total of two pi, right? So that could give us the fraction of the circle right there. So all we need to do is divide by one and then multiply by the reciprocal. And we end up, the pi's cancel. We get five over eight, okay? An online store receives customer satisfaction ratings between zero and 100 inclusive. In the first 10 ratings the store received, the average was 75. So whenever we see average, we do average equals sum over number. So the number of ratings so far is 10, and the average is 75, so we could solve that for the sum. The sum of the first 10 would equal 750. All right, we'll store that away for later. What is the least value the store can receive for the 11th rating and still be able to have an average of at least 85 for the first 20 ratings? Okay, so um, let's do an average for the 20 ratings. Sum over number, so this time we're gonna have 20 ratings and we want the average to be at least 85, so let's make it actually equal to 85. We'll solve this for the sum. So we just have to do 85 times 20 via cross multiplication, we get 1700 for the sum. So the sum right now is 750 and we want the sum to eventually be 1700. Uh, this is the sum of 20 items, this is the sum of 10 items, right? So the question is, what is the least we can get on the 11th? Can we get a zero on the 11th and still make it happen? That's kind of the question, right? So what we could do is we could assume that we got a maximum score on 12 all the way through up to 20. Okay, so there's, there's 10 more exams, um, and 9 of them we got 100. So that's 900, okay? So we can add that to the original sum to get a new sum, right, would be 1650. And then we just need 50 more points to get up to 1700. So 50 is the minimum score we can get on that 11th test to get us up to the mark. In the XY plane, if a point with coordinates AB lies in the solution set, what is the maximum possible value of B? Okay, well, since we have the calculator, we could graph them out and see how they look, right? Um, but, I mean, theoretically, like, all we need to do is find the intersection point, right? Because let's say one of them is like this, shading upwards, and the other one might be, for example, like this, um, again, shading upwards. Really, it, this is the critical point here. It's the intersection point. That's going to be your sort of maximum or minimum of your solution set. So all we need to do is find the intersection point. To do that, we just can set the right sides equal. Plus 3000 equals 5x. So we add 15x to both sides. That gets us 20x is 3000. Then divide by 20 and the zeros cancel. 300 over two is 150. So x is 150. Uh, that is our minimum x value. To find our minimum y value, um, we would have to plug back in. So we do 150 times five, 
and just in case 150 times 5 we get 750 750 would be our minimum for our y value it would be the corresponding y value of that intersection point 